What's up, everybody? My name is Justin. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Mona, and I'm back at it again today with another tutorial. This time, I'm gonna walk you through how to use Mona portals. Using a portal, you'll be able to actually connect your space to other spaces within the Mona metaverse. I'm so excited to walk through portals with you guys, so let's dive right in. Here's a quick example of how portals work inside of Mona. So here we are inside the Mona Genesis Gallery. And as I approach a portal, you'll see in the bottom right corner, some information is going to appear. So I'm looking at this portal and it's gonna tell me a few things about what this portal leads to. So first you'll see the name of the space that this portal connects to, in this case, Imagineering Lab 1, the artist who created the space that this portal connects to, which is Marco Matic. And then you have a couple of actions. So you can either click to enter or you can press E for more details. If you press E for more details, it's just gonna bring up more information about the space. And eventually you'll be able to actually purchase the space right through this link. But for now, this just is a reminder sort of button. It'll bring you back to our Discord for now until we have minting activated. So we're gonna go back. Now I'm just gonna try to click to enter and you'll see it'll tell me you're entering Imagineering Lab 1 and then boom it drops me right into that space. So that's the beauty of portals. This is what's going to allow you to travel between these spaces all inside of Mona. So you see now we're inside of Marco Maddox Imagineering Lab. Now if I turn around and face the portal that's in his Imagineering Lab once again it's going to give me information about the space that's connected to this portal in which case is Genesis the artist, which is the Mona Collective. And if I click to enter, as I'm looking at the portal, it's gonna teleport me right back to Genesis. There we go, and we're back in the Genesis gallery. And do that once more. You'll notice the click to enter is only gonna work as you're looking at the portal. If I click and I'm not looking at it, nothing's gonna happen. You have to be looking at the actual portal. Click to enter, you're entering Imagineering Lab 1, and boom, there we are, back into Markomatic space. Next, we're gonna dive into Unity to show you how to set up your portal objects and the portal prefabs in the Mona Unity template. Back in Unity, I have downloaded and opened up the Unity Space Starter Mona template. And I've made sure I've gone to Scenes and opened up the Mona template scene. This is where you'll find your space prefab and this is where all the changes are gonna take place. Under the space prefab, you have three layers. You have scene objects, artifacts, and portals. Scene objects, that's where you're gonna place all of the objects for the actual scene, for the environment, that's gonna be a part of that space NFT. Artifacts is where you're gonna place all of your NFT artifacts that you're importing from other platforms or that you'd like to mint inside of Mona. And for this tutorial, we're going to dive into how to use the portals layer. So under portals, you have your portal prefab, which consists of two objects, this example portal and portal one. So the object that you should pay the most attention to is this one here, example portal. This is where you're going to be able to actually replace this object with your own mesh. And that can be a door, a window, anything. In the Genesis gallery, like in that example I showed you, we're just using some nice looking curtains for our portals. When you're creating portals, a good practice to follow is to actually create a doorway or portal that's large enough to allow your avatar to be able to pass through it. Right now we're using a click through functionality, but in the future you'll actually be able to just walk through the portals rather than having to click. And so you do want your portal to be large enough. In order to help with this, you can go to assets example assets, avatar, and you can actually click and drag this avatar right into the scene. And this is just an example to give you a sense of scale for how large your avatar is. So as you can see, the example portal that we provide is more than large enough for the avatar to eventually be able to walk through like an actual doorway. Something else that's important to note is this portal one if you're using your own mesh for your portal, 
you just want to make sure that this actual portal one object, which is just a simple plane, is going to be as, as large as the actual portal mesh that you're importing. So if you see here, I can sort of scale this up and see how the plane is getting to be larger than that, that rectangle portal. See how it's getting larger than that cube portal object. You just want it to sort of nicely fit inside of the actual mesh for your portal. And, all right, I'm just going to delete this avatar from the scene. And I haven't really made any changes, but I'm just going to go to Overrides, Apply All, just in case. And for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to do a quick asset bundle. So I can jump into the Mona Playground and show you how this is starting to look. All right, so we're in Mona.Gallery slash Playground. And we're going to navigate to our Assets folder, Streaming Assets. And this is where your Space Asset Bundle has been saved to. We're going to click and drag Space and drop it right into the Playground so that our Space is going to load up. OK, now we're in our sample space. So similar to the actual live Mona site, we have some uh, callouts on the screen. On the bottom right, you'll notice we have a space summary. This is going to be able to tell you how many portals you currently have in your space, in addition to how many artifacts you have in your space. Right now, we just have our one portal in our space. And if I look at that portal, you'll see it's going to give me a call out. You're looking at a portal. You'll be able to connect it to another space after you mint. And it's also telling me the actual game object name, which is portal one. A good practice is to keep your portal names all consistent. So if you have more than one portal in a scene, portal two would then be named portal two. And then if you have a third portal, it would be portal three and so on. For the Filecoin forum, we're limiting the number of portals in each space to just one. So you should only have one portal in your space if you're building for the Filecoin forum. Now I'm going to walk you through the process of replacing this sample portal mesh with your own mesh. So I'm going to drag in my mesh that I want to use as a portal, and I'm going to drop it right on top of portal prefab. I'm going to make sure this is zeroed out. And I'm actually going to drag this down and position this where I want it to be. We've placed the portal here in your scene, but you can actually place your portal anywhere you want within your scene. So I'll just move mine up a little bit, maybe. Something like that. OK. OK, so I'm just going to position this where I want it. I'm going to delete this portal object. It's going to ask me to open the prefab to do so. Totally fine. Just going to pop in here, delete, hit save, click back arrow here, and we're back in our scene. And remember what I said earlier, how this portal plane should encompass about the size of your actual portal. I'm just going to reposition this and make this a little bit larger just so it kind of fully encompasses this door here. It doesn't have to be exact as long as you get it close. That's totally fine. And actually, since I don't really want to see that actual portal, the most important thing about this portal one object is that it's got this box collider on it. So you want to leave that active, but you can actually turn the mesh renderer off if you want to. So this is looking pretty good. I'm going to go back up to space, overrides, apply all. And we're going to go to assets, build asset bundles. It's going to build my new asset bundle back in mona.gallery slash playground. We're going to go to our space starter template folder, assets, streaming assets. Once again, drop in your space asset bundle.
and there we are. Now you've just customized your portal within your space. How cool is that? Then when it comes time to mint your space and upload it to Mona, you'll actually be able to connect your space to another space via this portal. All right, so that covers Mona portals. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. Feel free to subscribe. We'd love to see you coming back for more of these tutorials on how to build your spaces in Mona. We have some links in the description if you haven't already signed up for the Filecoin forum. Filecoin is giving away $200,000 to their favorite spaces built throughout the month of October. Definitely click that link and register. We also have a couple other links. Join our Discord. We have a really amazing creative community forming around building these incredible 3D spaces inside the metaverse, inside of Mona. So definitely join our Discord. Ask any questions. We're always here to help. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the Discord.